YouTube, so I've got this in for a wee bit of a setup. This is brand spanking new. Um, this is a Squire 6. So oh, it's not actually called a base 6. It's just a Squire 6. I was calling it a base 6. So this is a 30 inch normal guitar, normal Fender would be 25 and a half, 25 and a half inch, 30 inch scale, six string bass made famous I suppose by the Beatles. If you watch um, especially he the Hey Jude video when they're doing some TV show, George Harrison's playing one, I think, I think they're one red maybe, they're making that up, maybe this colour, I think it's a sort of, I think it might, their one might be red, but um, yeah, so it's kind of, I suppose, like a Jaguar or something like that, shape-wise, um, with Jaguar pickups, with a metal, so it looks a wee bit like saw blades on either side of them, single coils, three on-off switches, and a strangle switch, which is like, kind of like the, I've been putting in a high-pass filter, it's a high-pass filter, basically, but I've been putting it on a knob on some with the bucky cast and stuff, I've got it. Because I bought a big box of capacitors and made a mistake. Um, it wasn't 20 I bought. It was 20 bags of 50 I bought. Or 50, whatever it was. I ended up with like a thousand capacitors. Like that, right? But if you look up the capacitors, they were like a pound each. And it, the, the bag I bought was like £2.50. And I got like a thousand of them. So that's why I've been putting them in so many things. But this is instead of being on a on a pot, it's just a switch. Um, and it's got a, the Jazzmaster type trim. Or is that a Jaguar trim? Yeah, so I do know a lot about, about these. I actually made one myself. I've got one. Mine is a Telecaster, made at a kitchen worktop, though, um, which I actually played live a couple of times. Um, so it's it's the same scale length, but it's got a much wider fingerboard. This is a really thin neck. Um, a really thick. I bet, I bet you it's not really thin. I bet you it's only. You know what's a normal guitar? Forty two, something like that. Uh, this is where's. Can't find my B. This is a it's a forty mil nut, not string spacing, and instead of putting like forties thinner than most guitars, and they put it on a bass. I don't know why they did that. The one I've got is like forty four. <laughs> it makes a big difference. It means you it means you can, you, can, you still can't really play it with your fingers. You sort of can, but um. Actually, with a bit of practice, you can. You usually kind of get your finger in below the strings because obviously you can't get your finger between the strings without touching both of them. So it's a kind of weird one, the Fender 6. Um, it kind of fits, I always feel it fit, this kind of sits and you, you can actually um, string these as a baritone, which is another option, which there's issues with the six string bass, I think. I know this is my pal's and he's just bought it, but um, he, was, he brought it and said it's like the, 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 the low E string is a bit buzzy and it's kind of, yeah, kind of is. It's like at this tension and with this, with this at this scale length, with this thickness of string, it's just not tense enough. So you have to sort of mute it when you're playing to make it not do that. Yeah, it's fine like that, but. That's me kind of trying to make. You just have to hit it much softer, which is something that you just. I mean, I, I haven't, I haven't really had a, a really good go at trying to sort it. I have to straighten the action on it. It's really pretty. Was pretty hard. Um, sorted out the truss rod, pulled it back. It's brand new from Guitar Guitar, so it came straight out the box. There you go. So, how long did time did you spend setting it up? Mm -hmm. So this one does actually, it, it seems to be able to play chords okay, which mine, the one I made, doesn't really seem to be able to do that. I wonder if I maybe put thicker strings on it. So it does have a thing. Um, I'm just using the neck pickup, playing through the bass amp. It's got a tremolo. And that's me pure well in it. So it's like kind of why you don't really get basses with tremolos. It does something, but it, it's like it does half what a Bigsby does. Nah, okay, maybe it's got its thing. I 
think, see, to be honest, we're talking about the, the string buzzing a little bit. Just with the tension thing, these strings are not, it's not standard bass strings. It's, it's, sorry, it's tuned E to E. So it's basically just tuned exactly like a guitar, apart from down an octave. If you put baritone strings on it, which are thinner, then you tune it B to B, B, E, A, F, D, F sharp, B, E, A, D, F sharp, B, I think is how that goes. So basically all your chord shapes are the same. It's just that, you know, it's like just like drop B or something like that. It's much, much more brang and it sound, you can hit chords, like the open E. Like, it's like bass chords, on basses you can play chords, but you have to kind of, as opposed to, do you know what I mean? Um, but these are quite, is it the, the guy in the Cure, Robert Smith in the Cure uses one of these for some other famous stuff, you know, put, for effects and all that, it's, it's, it's a different, a different palette you get. I'm still, just a wee bit of the idea, like, the reason you get, like, a bass and a guitar is because that's the two best things. This is somewhere between the two. Um, and not kind of just not as good as either really same with a baritone guitar it's somewhere between a bass and a guitar but it's not as guitar as a guitar or as bassy it's not as much as either of them it's kind of less somehow um, but really I, I think for I mean, the, the, my father who owns this is going to use it for recording and stuff and I can totally see how it'd be great not to have a solo on it or something like that I just I don't know where it would really sit in a band um, and saying that when I was playing with Jesse Ray I used a I made one, <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I've got my Telecaster one, but I made another one uh, shaped like a Claymore, kind of like that, which I gave to him, um, and I, I played them all with that, and it was a case of just when you were on E string, kind of meeting it with my right hand, otherwise it was a bit buzzy, or just being very, very precise with it. I feel I feel I've not really I've, I've only spent half an hour setting this up and it's like it's still buzzing a bit and the thing is I kind of know because I've had a few of them in fact actually I've actually had three I had one that I made out of a Squire Showmaster um, and it is just th this the E string isn't thick enough to work without really farting <laughs> if you hit it hard which actually you can get away with if you, if you compare it to like a wee a wee tenor bass. The, th the strings on this are way thicker, but it could it can hold the 30 inch scale. I mean, we're, we're really talking about, I don't have any way of measuring this, but we're really talking about, I would even, I would even suggest that the, the A string, the, the A string on this is maybe slightly thicker than the E string on this. So there might be a way around it if you put fatter strings on but to be honest I think the way to do it is to put baritone strings on it and use it as a tune differently one. Oh, also, also I've got my EB, EB6 which is like an SG bass or an MBO with uh, six strings. Uh, I've got it with baritone strings on it tuned to B which gives you a most amazing brang when you hit it. It kinda, it's kind of doing it. But I mean to be honest the strings that are on my uh, Telecaster Telebass 6 uh, are pff, 10 years old so they don't fart anymore because the strings have zero life at all you know they're just boom 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 which which means they don't buzz yeah, maybe I do quite like the the tremolo I want to at one point I'm going to have to get one of those callers you get bass callers I know it's not going to do very much but that's doing something. That is me welling it, but... See what I mean? But it's that, the, actually, the bridge is quite good for muting with your hand.
So I basically used the six string bass with Jesse just for there was one song that adds like um during it for a bit in the middle of it, which I like being able to play the chords. Because we were a sort of three piece with a keyboard, guitar and drums, that worked really and bass, it worked really well. Been able to actually have full chords for one section. I can't remember which song it was, was it? Uh, coming through, we're going to go for the bridge pickup. Go for the guitar amp, so the bass amp. The nut's been cut really badly. Um, the truss rod was all off. It's actually in tone though. This, the action of this is. I mean, it might even be a. Have I got a pound coin there? I don't know, is it a pound coin? It's a pound coin at the 12th fret, which I don't even think. What's this? Yeah. I, will, I do need to do some setting up on it. So. Uh, <laughs> I'll maybe do. I'll, I'll have another another go at it. It's just because I've kind of I've kind of know these now. It takes a wee bit of while to get used to the the string spacing as well, being really tight. A bass, so bending strings is like bending a bass string. You're not really getting two notes. That's physically as high as I can bend it. Thank you. 
there is more. Two amps better than one. Yeah, so I guess you've got, um, you do have three pickups, so bass pickup or neck pickup, those. Middle pickup. Bridge pickup. Two on. Okay, check, check to try and turn the reverb up as loud as it goes, just for. What's it like with too much reverb? There's, there's a knob in the back of this, or, or that one. So, too much reverb. Triangle switch. Uh using that strangle switch very much but again put it through a fuzz pedal or something might make it I 
I get that last one. Six string, the Fender Six. Um, I'm sort of starting to remember it a little bit. Kind of again, it's like as I said, between guitar and bass. I'm the sort of person that can play one of these because I play guitar and bass equally. I think they're both awesome. Whereas you get a lot of people like, oh, I play guitar. I do have a bass, but I do. and then you get people who play bass, can't play guitar. It's like so like Benny Bill playing both. You kind of get a a distinct advantage with this but it still needs a bit of thought some, some things you can do really well some things you can't really do it's just a case of working out what it is but these used to be in um used to use these in the old country records like at the grand old opera and all that and you would basically just double up the bass part with sort of That mic's been away over there a bit. I might have to do this video again. Damn it. And I'll, I'll see if I can try and get it to buzz a bit less. Um, I just think I'm a wee bit onto plums without actually changing the string gauge or tuning it up. Also, Ian had it tuned to D sharp which he likes to do with all his guitars, which is fine, makes it easier to sing and stuff, but you're already at the absolute minimum tension that this string can take before it doesn't work. Um, at E, so tuning it down, it just makes it more buzzy and less stable. Um, kind of having the same issue with, uh, or Scott's having the same issue with my eight string guitar, which actually probably is not that different to this. What's it tuned to F sharp? But uh, kind of same, similar sort of gauge and all that. It's just not enough tension so it's like the note isn't pure stable when you hit it it doesn't just go woo, it kind of goes woo, a wee bit kind of it kind of goes whoa whoa a wee bit rather not as much as that but you know what i mean just because it's tension tension challenged but i'm gonna have to dig out my um my tele my tele bass and put strings on it for the first time in forever and maybe even paint it, or maybe actually finish it. I don't think I ever finished it. Um, and then find some use for it. Uh, see, that's the problem. You just go, what, what am I going to do with it? Apart from just sitting playing along the house, it's great. But um, can I really use it in a band? Unless it's a very specific band. And once you start using this, what do you, do you, you're just kind of stepping in. I don't know. I think you just need to be an awful lot more considerate than I am. You know, it's like for you, you could easily, with this, kind of destroy the bass player. By playing too much and also you're kind of stepping on the toes of the bass player and the guitarist who obviously sit there and fight over that's why whenever i'm playing the bass i'm always kind of down here uh, so the guitarist get lots of room whereas if i play up here you're, you're encroaching on their situation but i mean it feels lovely it does um i'm not sure what the fingerboard's made of i think it's made of something fancy or not, not rosewood. Is it pow ferro or something? It kind of looks dusty. I don't think it is. I will try putting some oil conditioner on it, but I think it's kind of just this type of wood. Kind of looks that way. It, it looks. It's not rosewood, but it kind of looks like that pure awful rosewood you get on um, like Chinese guitars from, or Korean guitars from the nineties. When you get that wood, it's like it is rosewood, but it's uh, the very last of the rosewood that nobody else wanted kind of get that look but that's i mean i've seen this on really expensive guitars that pow ferro that's why rosewood was more popular than pow ferro to start with kind of has a wee sort of mm, look to it but it's got all the bells and whistles fancy just a uh, standard cloth and tuners on it um indonesia this is made it's even it's brand new it's even 2022 so it's got cloth and tuners 
So you need to get specific strings for it. Mind you, you're gonna you're gonna be putting specific strings on it anyway. Ah, I see that. That's where it's not gonna work with the bass. You know, it's like you know, if you put like a a normal bass E string on it, but it's not gonna fit through the tuner. It's not gonna fit through the nut, and it's not gonna fit over the bridge. But apart from that, it's gonna fit fine. The scale length will be right. Um. I've just discovered what the, bu the buzzing is. It's that. And it, that's the buzz. It's that one. The, the bass, the E string, is sitting on top of this screw that's holding the, um, the bridge on. Um... I think it is that. It's because the buzz doesn't seem, it's, it's kind of weird one. It doesn't seem to be coming all the time. And you can't, it doesn't seem to be coming from here, even though it's. I think it's that. How can I, can I wedge just as a wee temporary measure? Let's see if I stick a piece of, um, that piece of foam there will do it lovely. If I put this in below here. Not really, doesn't it? Did. Maybe not. That does sound like a mistake, though. Um, I don't really see any other way around that. It. It's just the, the actual string. I don't know if you can see it, it's actually, when it comes out of the bridge, it's just going over this bolt that's holding the string on and touching it. So it does that. So I wonder if this video will be going out. I'll probably put it out anyway, because <laughs> um, I just put in it. I don't really care. I will have a wee go for the rest of this afternoon and see if I can get this to play a bit. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I kind of don't want to spend tons of time on it to fail because I kind of know I'm going to fail. I kind of know that this is what a Fender 6 is. This is why they're not really that common and they didn't make them for very long and not an awful lot of people use them. It is a kind of deal, dealing with some of the quirky things it's quirky there you go it's not a bass and it's not a guitar it seems to it seems really buzzy doesn't it but when the neck is fine I've checked all the frets I've gone through every single fret they're all perfectly level it has had a fret job on it I mean, it's, it's like that thing about the tension thing. It doesn't go, pfft, it goes, bum. But again, I think it's kind of, I've actually, if you, but if you're bored, look up uh, John Lennon's uh, bass track to the Helter Skelter, um, and it's basically it, it sounds like that. Tons of reverb, buzzing like mad. If you're touching the strings, so they don't fart. It's a kind, it's a kind of funny one. Maybe very interesting in the mix type thing. Um, highlights it, points off for a specific solo. I said, I think my, my way around it would be if I had one of these, I would probably put um, I put baritone strings on it, tune it to a baritone, and then it becomes whoa when you go, it just goes bang as opposed to yeah, it's all right, it's kind of playing chords, but the thing about the baritone and the baritone is no longer a bass, whereas this is still a bass, sort of. very 
really softly. And I used to, I remember I used to have a terrible issue with my Fender Music Man, Music Master bass with a low E. It just farted all the time, but it, now it doesn't because, and I don't, I don't get it with that with the wee encore bass there because I'm just used to playing a short scale bass, so I just know you can't hit that string as hard. Now you kind of go dum 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 boom. It's always a bit of a, as opposed to being, you know, you can't just batter away at it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it though. Listen, I was going to say, kind of, the sort of thing you would send back for that. But the thing is, that if they send you another one, I don't. It's the design that's wrong. It's not built wrong. There's no, there's no obvious issue. If I've got the, the truss rods, still with uh, enough relief in it, so it's not hindering things. That bridge hitting that bolt really annoys me. I wonder if you actually need that or that, that bolt. I mean, it's kind of holding on that. I probably wouldn't bother adjusting it. Just, just seems like in this day, especially if you're paying four hundred quid for a guitar, and it's like that. The answer is going to be, I think you'll find that the original nineteen sixty six one was built badly as well, and it's a vintage correct. Yeah, don't go sort that problem. Same thing with you know your your Les Paul headstock. Don't put no volute in the back. You can't do that. That's not like a real Gibson. Yeah, but if you drop it, it snaps off. I want a real Gibson, so. I mean, they think they did that in the 70s, they put a volume on so that it didn't, the headstock didn't snap dead easily. <laughs> and it's like, people went mental, you can't have that. I want my Gibson headstocks to snap off. Great system. Um, you can maybe try and modernise things where applicable, if something better comes in. Same with the idea of using the wire as well. It's like, oh no, I'll use the cloth covered wire with two metal strands. All right. right. You know you can get like copper wire with rubber on it or like with PVC on it which is just better in every single way. I think you'll find they didn't use that in 1958. That won't give the same tone. Really? It lets a, good, it lets a really small electrical signal through it differently, does it? Wire, does it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then that makes a difference when you've got like 10,000 winds of a really, 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 really thin wire around that and you're going and so you get 10,000 winds meters and meters of wire in your pickup and you're putting a piece of wire that goes from there to there on the neck pickup the long bit and that makes a difference that bit of wire makes a difference does it really bit of a rant there sorry the, the volume was gone I can't be bothered doing it again I hope the volume's alright I might have to turn it down I should probably just have left it over there rock on catch you later